We'll hit record. And I will spotlight myself so you guys are not all um, on the recording. Um, and thank you for coming. So this masterclass, if you've joined us before for a masterclass, I don't know if any of you have. Um, we've been running them all year long on the fourth Thursday of every single month. I know this is the fifth one. Um, but the fourth Thursday of every single month, I've had someone come and do master classes for us, but starting now and through, uh, 2024, I am personally going to be teaching all of the master classes, um, because I do teach a lot of classes, um, in our membership and just, just around the world. I've been a business trainer for decades. Uh, and I decided, I think I'll do them from now on because I really enjoy it. <laughs> so I wrote down like all of these subjects and I was like, from now on, I'm going to do it. So we were going to start with making soul centered decisions in your business. Um, because I think that is the most important. If let me just look who's here. It's hard to see when I'm spotlighted. Um, I think I know everyone, but I will tell you one more time who I am. I am Camille Miller. If you don't know, I run the Soul Professional Society at the Natural Life Business Partnership. It is a membership organization for global entrepreneurs that live in a higher vibration, have an alternative approach to business, and are here to impact the world um, or repair the world. That's an, a good one, too. Um, I call myself an alternative business engineer. I am a business consultant. I am not a long-term coach. I really work with thought leaders, visionaries, deliberate creatives, and very logically minded, spiritually grounded individuals, um, usually introverts. So if you're here, you might be one of me. I am an introvert. Um, they were highly successful in a non-soul-based in industry, and but they're very spiritually grounded and they're they were working... Um, but they didn't make their hearts sing. So doctors, lawyers, CPAs, therapists, coaches, um, people that have left a different world and they're like, now it's about freedom. And freedom is really a non-negotiable. So I always say, I want to work less and travel more. So those are usually the people that I also um, attract because we attract exactly who we are, at least. And our clients are usually who we were two years ago. Those are the people looking for help. Um, and I help people design that perfect business. So I always say, if you don't like doing Facebook, don't do Facebook. If you don't want to do lives, don't do lives. If you're a really good writer, do that. You only attract people the exact way when you're authentic, when you're absolutely living in your truth. So everything that I teach, uh, is not what I learned in business school at all. Um, I do think that there are some core values to business that I do teach my six figure soul boot camp. Um, when we talk about cash flow statements and P&Ls and paying down debt and how you're building wealth, that's all really important and true. And that's math. Um, not a big fan of math, but know how it works. Um, and it is important to know that in your business. But when I talk about how you're marketing, how you're putting yourself out there, how you're attracting clients so you're not working every single day, that's what I'm talking about doing business differently. That's what I'm talking about. They did not teach me in... Um, um, in business school to love what I do, just to wake up and be happy. But my father did tell me that, you know, when you're in the right job, when you win the lottery and you do it anyway, when you wake up and you go to work the next day. And that's how you know that you are working in your passion. That you are working in alignment. If there's something about your business that you just don't love, that just, just irritates you, or you're finding yourself procrastinating a lot, or you're really not bringing in the money um, that you need or want, um, there's there's just a disconnect there. There's nothing wrong with what you're doing. There's just a disconnect there. And same thing, if you're putting out all of these programs and people aren't joining them, it's nothing wrong with the program. Don't go get another certification or do more. What you need to do is um, attract people differently. So that's a some of the things that I talk about when I teach, um, I have a very interactive teaching style. So I appreciate when you interact with me. Um, I'm not a big presenter. Um, I usually, um, you know, talk to the crowd and teach to the crowd. And if anyone wants to step up with their own problems, very happy if you want to be in the hot seat just to talk about that. So feel free to stop me. Use the chat, which I should actually probably look at. Um, and we'll go from there. Does that sound good? 
Yep. All right. So the first thing I want to know about if you um if you want to talk, you can talk. If you want to put in the chat, you can put in the chat. But why did you decide to show up today? I know, I just love the connection of other ladies and Camille, I know you're brilliant at what you do. So I just figured there'd be some great nuggets that got dropped down, right? <laughs> Yay. <laughs> um but also I, I have a, well, a wellness community that I run through my business on Facebook. And okay. I was listening to the last recording this week from Tyson Sharp with the Serving Circle. Yep. And I really love some of the insights that were shared there about, you know, how do you want to make your audience feel? And I just thought, what a good grounding question, because I'm sure we all have obviously an audience or we wouldn't have a business, whether it's through Facebook, Instagram, however you're doing it. But, you know, just asking yourself, Self that question, you know, what value are you adding all the time? But is it really helping them feel the way that you you want them to? Like, what are they taking away from that experience with working with you or interacting in your group or however? So yeah, I just thought, I don't know if that's a conversation anybody wants to have, but it sure resonated yeah. with me today. Yeah, it's important. People always remember how you made them feel. Right. Yeah. And I always say there's so many people out there that have a, doing the exactly the same things. Right. I can tell you how many business coaches, strategists, guides, mentors, whatever they're calling are out there. Right. They're out there. Uh, yeah. How many doctors graduate from uh, medical school? Lawyers graduate from law school. They're all graduating with the exact same degree being called the exact same thing. But when you're ready to hire someone, you interview all of them. Right. Because it's who are you attracted to? And that's the difference. So you are the differentiator in your business and people come to you because of the energy that you're giving out in the world, right? That's how you're attracting people. That's the law of attraction. They're like, there's something about this person that makes me feel good. And that's who I'm going to work with. And I don't think it really matters personally, all the letters after your name, all the certificates you have, it's how you make people feel. That's it. It's how you yeah. make people feel. And Absolutely. if people feel loved and warmed and supported, that's all they're looking for. They're looking for someone to hold space for them. And it's human nature to do so, by the way. Right. So if someone doesn't make you feel good, and that's some, some of the stuff we're going to talk about today. If it doesn't make you feel good for any reason, if it's, if it's your body saying no, your mind saying no, something doesn't feel right because your energies aren't in alignment it's because it's not right it's you know we work with people that we attract and we attract people naturally so i can tell you by work from working in the soul lines um big i think i'm going on my ninth year doing this um that the people i attract also do business differently they react differently so if that's the world you're in, which you probably are because you're here, um, I can make a billion posts. People really aren't reacting to them, right? I'm not pulled in by too many people's posts, right? And if it doesn't work for me, it's probably not going to work for the clients that are I'm attracted to, right? I don't use Instagram. I paid a boatload of money for people to get my Instagram really high and getting all this stuff. And you know what? nothing came from it. I just lost a lot of money. Right. Yeah. And guess yeah. what? I don't have an Instagram account. So why in the world would my people be there? <laughs> right? <laughs> right. But I am addicted to TikTok. Guess what? I'm on TikTok. Guess what? I get people from TikTok because there in, in a minute, I can just tell my truth and that's it. People align or they don't align and I'm okay with it either way. So, um, that's what yeah, there's I not think. a lot of prep with TikTok. I mean, you don't have to make a big caption and a bunch of hashtags. You don't have to do any graphics. You just show up and go, here's what I have to tell you right now. So yeah, I, I like that too. And that's how, that's how I pretty much built. And I don't have a huge following and, and I go, I could go weeks without doing a damn thing on it. Mm -hmm. And then I feel very inspired to talk about something or I read books constantly and all of a sudden I leave 10 videos because I'm thinking about something or I just feel Ooh. that's what's drawn to me. Right. And I cool. always say, whoever's supposed to see it, sees it. 
That's yeah. it. <laughs> I, don't, I, I have no attachment to it. And I think that's really um, a big difference in our businesses. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that is not being attached to the outcome. Right? right. It's holding your vision, holding what you want to happen. Right. I want to work less, travel more. That's what I want. I have this huge. Here. Can you see it? Wait. See oh, my, I love your vision board. My yeah. vision board. Yeah. Let me tell you, it's all freaking Italy. <laughs> where, I, where I've never been, but I will be tomorrow. That's that's mm -hmm. the vision that I've looked at for a year and a half. How do I get there? How do I get there? How do I get there? Now that's the Amalfi Coast. I'm not going there, but <laughs> I'll be back, <laughs> right? But it's holding the vision, holding the vision, holding the vision, not telling yourself, I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet. I can't afford it. Um, it's always saying, getting ready to go. I'm getting ready to go. Where should I go, right? What does it look like? Looking up the plane tickets, right? When I decided I wanted to travel, I had to start small. I had to start with day trips, right? Then I had to start with weekend trips. Then I started getting on planes, but I, there was mostly domestic. Now it's actually cheaper to leave the country. So I go on international trips a couple of times a year because it's just the way it's grown. Right. But that was, that was a goal. So if you have a goal to run a marathon, first you got to buy a good pair of sneakers. Mm -hmm. That's, that's a step. That's a sliver of success. Just, that's a step in the right direction right? You got to go walk around the block, right? You don't start running right away. And I've shared this story before and I'll share it with you guys. Um, I used to be a pretty extreme athlete, but when I was doing, my sister had asked me at one time to do a triathlon after we had just finished like a 40 mile bike race. And I was like, yeah, I don't run. No, <laughs> like, I was like, I can't do that with you, uh, but I'll go and I'll cheer you on. She's like, you can do it. Uh, a triathlon, just so you know, is a swim, a bike and a run right? Um, I was a competitive swimmer. I had just finished a 40 mile bike race. I just didn't run. And she's like, so walk it. And I was like, what? And she's like, so walk. What's the difference? She's like, lots of people walk it. And that changed my life right there. I actually decided to do it, which was only like 60 days later. <laughs> but I did my first triathlon because she, it's almost like she gave me permission to just do it differently. Mm -hmm. Just walk it. And guess what? I didn't run. Well, I did a little jog and then a walk and then a little jog and then a walk. And that's how I've done it. And I did four triathlons after that exactly the same way. I was never able to run and I never pushed myself to run because I was strong in the other ones. But I remember being in this, uh, the last one I did was a uh, um, it's an ocean swim. It's done in the Jersey shore. And there was a storm that came through and the ocean was violent, violent. I was actually really surprised they still had it. Um, and there was a lot of people that had to be saved that day. And I was so proud that I even got through that swim because it was, they should not have had it that day, but it was a violent swim, but there were people in there with noodles, like little swimmy noodles. <laughs> and I was like, wow, that is incredible. It was just about finishing, mm -hmm. right? So when you're going through anything in life, anything in your business, both personal and professional, because as entrepreneurs, we're dovetailed like this, right? Mm -hmm. um, just remember, it's a baby step. It's just a small baby step in the right direction, but momentum is the most important part. You have to have momentum and you have to acknowledge every little, 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 little thing we do. Um, in our private uh, member, in the membership, we have what's what's a call it's called what works what doesn't and why and you are not allowed to speak until you tell me a success that you had since the last call and sometimes people show up and they said well i showed up today and that's a success because you got up and you showed up sometimes it's showering sometimes it's getting dressed like we all have wins but you have to celebrate every single win along the way because that's how you keep receiving and universe goes you want more of that you want more of that, right? When you see someone um, driving a car you want or being in a house that you want or whatever it is for you, um, you don't look at it with envy. You just say, yes, please. I'd like more of that. That's for me. That's for me, 
right? Not from a place of lack saying, I don't have it, but I think that's what I'm going to buy ne next. I look at Porsches all the time because I have one that I want and it's about $125,000. <laughs> but every time I see it, I'm like, do you think I'll look good in that color? I don't know. I think that leather is a little nicer. So I study them like I'm picking them out because someday I will have one. And it's just a, I just, I don't need much. I want to travel. I like a Porsche. Um, I don't need the big fancy house and a lot of other things, but I like cars and I love to drive. Um, so that's what you're doing, right? So if you want something, think about going and buying it. doesn't mean you're doing it in that minute. Do not put yourself in debt. That's, that's my financial abundance. <laughs> just do not do, do not live outside of your means, but put your mindset there. Does that make sense? Yes, please. More thank you. Yes. Yeah. I'm just looking through this. I'd want to go. To... But what a good idea. When I decided I wanted to go to Italy, I used Google Earth to put myself in beautiful locations. I love that idea. So I watch a lot of YouTubes when I was kind of deciding where I wanted to go and how, I because I was, when I tell you, scared shitless. When I keep calling myself an international traveler, but I'm really <laughs> but I am after today. Well, I was in London earlier, but, um, and even going to London, I have a, I had a child that moved to London for school and I was like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. I don't know if I can do it. Right. And after London, I was like, look at me, international travelers. You see me go over that little pond, <laughs> right. <laughs> and figuring out how to use the Metro and, you know, being really comfortable was scary. And I did the same thing um, going to Italy. And I was like, how am I calling myself an international travel? How am I looking at my vision board every day and saying, I'm doing that. And I'm scared shitless inside to actually do it. Right. So I started to watch YouTubes, how to safely travel, how to use the Metro, how to buy a ticket. And there was one guy called stroller. He strolls through things so you can see him. So I know what a train looks like when I get off the train, what door I go to, to get my ticket. When I get my ticket, what door I have to walk through because everything is on YouTube. Right. And we'll, we'll, we'll see how I do, but it's all about just doing a little bit of something towards whatever your dream is. Declare what your dream is. I say, declare, um, decide, declare, do right? Just take baby steps to create it. If you have to put pictures all over the place on my other wall, oh wait, now I have to turn all the way around. You see that, see that map right there? Mm -hmm. um, you can see it's still very gray, but that's when I decided I was going to be a world traveler. I got that map and I get one for each of my kids as they graduate college and I can just rub off where I've been. Oddly, I've not been to South Carolina and I did not know it until I had to rub it off. And I'm like, I don't think I've ever been to South Carolina. <laughs> but so little things like that. All right, let's dive in a little bit to today's subject, uh, which is making soul-centered decisions in your business. Um, the opposite of what I feel is soul-centered is ego-driven. So let's start with that. So one of the things um, I thought I'd start with, because I was, I was talking to my oldest child about this class yesterday, and she's like, well, how are you defining ego? How are you? And she had a lot of questions. And I was like, oh, let me go look that up. How am I defining it? Because I'm defining it in my way. So I wanted to start by saying ego, the way I'm talking about it today, is a person's self-esteem or self-importance, self-worth, um, um, and it's the way we consciously think about things because of our upbringing. Does that make sense? It's what we feel is um, important to us or how we have to show up that's not natural. Does that make sense? That's how I define ego. Um, ego to me is, you know, when you... Uh, We'll, we'll use my triathlon as a thing. If I had done the triathlon as, well, if I can't win, I'm not going to do it. That's coming from ego. 
Mm -hmm. right? Because I have to win. I have to be better, right? I have to beat someone else to put myself up, right? Mm -hmm. That's all ego. If you're looking at other people as competition, that comes from ego, right? Self-importance. But when you look at it from a soul place, from your soul center, um, I can say, I just needed to finish. And every year I just wanted to finish better than the year before. That was it. Finishing, walking over that line was all that I needed. And that was because it was for me, right? I didn't care about how I finished. I didn't even look it up, to be honest with you. I had no idea. Um, I still have no idea because <laughs> it didn't matter, right? Um, um, if uh, ego is when you needed, because um, this used to be me, I used to wanted all these letters behind my name because it came from a place of ego. And um, I actually never finished my dissertation when I was finished my all the coursework for my PhD because I met Bruce Lipton. Not that it's his fault, but I literally had drinks with Bruce Lipton one day and we talked for hours and hours and hours. And after I met him, I was writing my dissertation at that point. I went, I'm not fighting for these letters. Like everyone's going to be mad at me and I'm going to have to fight and defend and do all of this. And I already had the chair of my committee tell me that I was not allowed to use Joe Dispenza's science as a resource. And I was like, this whole thing is about mind, body, medicine. My degree was literally <laughs> in mind, body. It was actually called natural health science but I was studying the cellular change of thought, which Bruce Lipton was a pioneer of all of that. And that's how I got to meet him and everything. But I wasn't allowed to use his science. And I was like, why? And she said, because he makes people feel bad when they can't think their way out of sickness. And I went, something is terribly wrong here. And then I met Bruce. And then I was like, you know what? I'm not finishing. I've learned, I took all the classes. I've learned everything I needed to know. And I felt personally that I did not have to prove to anyone else what I thought or think. That was just me. That came from my soul. All of a sudden, those letters didn't mean as much to me. And I think that was a shift for me from my ego to my soul. And I've actually never looked back. So um, that those are some of the differences between ego and salt. Uh, any questions before I keep going? All right, I wanted to define those those two. I feel that every time that we have a business, no matter what that looks like for you, and I'm sure people on, on the line do all different things, um, we always have to check in with ourselves. Is it coming from my ego or is it coming from my soul? Because I feel a lot of times when I talk to entrepreneurs that there's a lot of marketing or posting where um, I call it shouting from the mountaintop. They are just putting anything out there. It doesn't really matter. There's no plan or strategy to it. But it's, and I don't think plan or strategy would matter if it was authentic, Right. When I get on TikTok, it's because I had a thought. It's not that I don't follow any algorithm of you got to do this three times a day and this is the many people and this is the time it's got to do. I don't do any of that. I just don't. I'm always in the thing. The right people will see it. The right people show up when they're supposed to hear me. Like that's where I come from all the time, all the time. So I approach things a little differently, but if you're feeling in your social media or your TikTok or your blogs or whatever it is for you that you're pushing to make it happen because this is what people do and it doesn't feel good, that's coming from your ego, not from your soul. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But if you did something that came from your soul, like if you love writing and it came from your soul and you just sat down and wrote, and you put out blogs once a week because that's how that's how you get the word out. That's how you communicate. Then that is authentic for you. Does that make sense? That's coming from your soul. 
Um, and however that looks like for you. I, I'm not a writer. I should stop saying that because I wrote two books and I'm writing my third, but I don't consider myself really a writer. Like I don't enjoy it. Let's put it that way. Like um, when I wrote those books, I enjoyed those moments that I sat down and collected my thoughts to get it out there. Mm -hmm. um, I did enjoy it, but I wouldn't say if I had to do a blog and I've tried this a billion times and my staff at one time was taking my videos and transcribing them and then I'd make a blog out of it and I just hated it. And I was like, I hate doing this. I'm not doing it. I'm, we're just not going to have a blog anymore. I don't care. Right. Then I had other people writing my blog for me. And, um, um, it, it, it didn't come from me. Like it didn't sound like me, right. I had other people making posts for me for a long while. Didn't mm -hmm. sound like me. Didn't come from me. So uh, I had to back all of that up and say, what am I really doing for me? Now I, I will admit that I moved a couple months ago and the idea, once I put into play, the move, everything started to shift and I had to realign. This is a perfect, perfect time of year. And we just had the full moon and all of this stuff is happening for us. This is a perfect time to shed what no longer serves you and to really sit with, do I like it? Do I not like it? Um, one of the things I always have people do the first time I meet with them for a strategy session is, uh, one, tell me your ultimate dream. Tell me your dream life. Like if money didn't matter, tell me what every day would look like for you because that's going to become our plan, right? So that's the first thing I start with. And the second thing is to take a piece of paper, divide it into two columns. And I literally did this by myself and I give you the strategy in my first book. This is, what, this is what's in my chapter. Divide it into two columns and write what I want, what I don't want right? What I want. Uh, I don't, um, you know, I want to work with soul aligned entrepreneurs, right? What I don't want. I don't want to work on weekends, right? Mm -hmm. Or I only want to work two days a week and I want to make a hundred thousand dollars, right? I don't want, I don't know, a board of directors for my company. I don't know what it is for you, right? I want to have freedom with my family. I want to be mm -hmm. able to travel, right? These are all my wants. Um, I don't want to work really hard. I don't want um, to have to write a blog. You have to think about it way more than that, <laughs> but really go through what, what do you really enjoy doing? Right? I love group work, love group work. So I started my company a little backwards. I started with the community. Um, just because I love interactions. I love feeding off of other people. I love facilitating these really awesome conversations and learning from people in a group. That's what I love. I know it. Um, um, it's not that I don't like working one-on-one -on -one with people because I do have plenty of one-on-one -on -one clients. But for me, I take between three and five at a time and that's it. Mm -hmm. Then you just go to a wait list because I want to dedicate my time to my people and that's it. And that's, that's my sweet spot. That's what I like, right? For in 2020, I did my uh, six figure soul boot camp, and then I stopped for two years and I just brought it back. And I can tell you going through it again, just brought all of this stuff. And I'm like, why did I stop doing this for two years? I, I had it online, but I wasn't a part of it. I wasn't facilitating it. <laughs> And I missed it. And now I'm like, I forgot how much I love to teach and mentor people. And that's, I look at myself as a mentor more than a, a coach or a guide, um, but I love doing it, right? So that's that's in there, right? So when you're deciding at the end of this year, what you absolutely love and what you don't love, and it, and it could be marketing or something, um, talk about, well, after you decide that and have those, then it's how do you work it back into your business, right? How do you work from that place of soul alignment so it works for you? Um, um, I'm trying to think of some um, suggestions. When I say a lot of times people hate the marketing, the posting, um, I do things when when they come to me and 
Sometimes I'm on a roll and they come out once a week. Sometimes not. <laughs> you know, it's just how, how does it work for you? What feels good? But at any time when something doesn't feel good, it's not good. It's not a good decision for you. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I used to run a 90 day to go challenge on October 1st of every single year to the end of the year. We ran it for five years. I did not do it this year because at the end of last year, I felt, and I did hear from a lot of people after doing it for five years that the end of the year should be a little calmer for everyone. And they didn't really want to do it. They actually really enjoyed when I did little spring ones. Right. So I had to listen to that. I never make a fast decision ever, 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 ever. And I had to listen and just say, you know, it really didn't serve me either. It was a lot of work to, to keep everyone motivated at the end of the year. So this year we didn't have it. I decided last year, I'm not doing it anymore. So it's a great time to decide. And that doesn't mean that you can't tweak things. It doesn't mean you can't bring things back. Just like I brought back my boot camp. Because I missed it. I was like, oh, it was a mistake. I let it go. It was really good. Uh, I have tweaked it. Now I do some personal coaching in there too, because I felt um, I brought up trauma in people and I wanted to really make sure that they uh, were supported and I held space for each one of them. So I meet with people individually now and put that into the packages. Um, yeah, the season is slow down in winter, spring, spring into spring. Yeah. Um, a lot of time for ourselves. I think the most brilliant times I have are either driving or in the shower. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a big driver, love driving. Like I could, if you said, hey, come visit me, I'm in Chicago. I'd be like, okay, I could be there in like 10 hours. Is that good for you? Love driving. Um, so um, I forgot my train of thought there. Um, but you work in alignment with who you are always, and you can bring back and shed things anytime you want. You are in control. And the big difference between being a business owner and an entrepreneur is an entrepreneur pivots all the time. Yeah. A business owner shows up and does their business. They have a job to do and they have to do it this way or it doesn't work. Does that make sense? Yep, it does. Yeah, you're just creating another job for yourself. An entrepreneur has freedom and flexibility and sure they work hard. So it's not like you don't have to work because action is a big part of getting, right? But if you're always working in alignment with who you are, it doesn't feel like work, right? I work all the time, but I actually love it, right? I get on calls with people all the time. I love, I love strategy. And that's one of the things that showed up in my two columns where I love building businesses. I hate running them. So guess what I do? I help people build businesses because that's what I love to do. I love coming up with the puzzle that's going to make it work. I love the puzzle. I love figuring out the packages and the pricing and how are we getting people in? Um, what, what works for you, right? Or coming back with people and saying, how'd that work? All right, let's tweak this. Let's see if this works. How does that feel for you? Um, any... Any thoughts, comments, feelings? Is this striking a chord with people? Yeah. I see a lot of nods. Yeah. Good. Um, Camille, can I just share one thing that might be helpful for everybody? Um, I started reading a new book called 10X is Better Than 2X. Is anybody familiar with that book? It's Dr. Benjamin Hardy. Uh, Amazing book. So it's kind of along the lines of what you're talking about, that most of us are living in a 2X zone of not um, like kind of, I shouldn't say most of us, but a lot of us go about our day in a 2X area where we are just going with the flow, the way that we've always done things, not really switching it up um, and not at being at our highest level. So TEDx is the highest level, but how do you get there? Removing all of that other stuff. So just being in complete alignment and breaking it down to being so clear about who you authentically are and who you really, really want to show up for. You're not gonna look for 300 climate clients. It's like 10 amazing ones that completely align with you and you with them. So it's narrowing it down and cutting out all that extra. And he uses the analogy of the, the David statue of Michelangelo was 
you know, when he went to do that, said, you love Italy, that brought out the story, Camille. <laughs> <laughs> so in Florence, many years ago, there was this, the statue of David. I mean, it's huge, it's like 17 feet tall. So many other sculptors had tried to do something with the statue of David and just kind of wrecked it and made it worse. And they weren't really understanding how to get into the um, actual essence of who David was and bring him out in the sculpture. So he talks about how Michelangelo studied how the human body worked for like hours and hours. Like he actually studied cadavers, which how disgusting is that? But he snuck into morgues to study how the, the muscles and the sinew and everything attached and how it works. So he could be so clear about how to bring David out in his like true essence, right? His true self. So he had to strip away all of that old stuff to get to the piece. So he actually did literally like strip away the statue almost to nothing and rebuild it. So he's like, think about that with yourself. You need to strip away all that stuff, that clutter, that noise, that distraction of other people and, you know, stay in your own lane and all these things we know, but it's hard to do it. It's hard not to compare and do all this. And, and the stuff that is just busy things, like strip all that away so you get to the actual 10% of you and how you can help people in the biggest way you've ever done it. Because you attract way less, but way, way better that are completely aligned. And yeah, anyways, I just thought it's a really interesting book. And yeah. uh, you can, if anybody watches the Ed Milet podcast series, he interviews him, Dr. Benjamin um, Hardy. It's like the podcast of all podcasts. <laughs> Like literally you'll want to hear it like five times because he just drops truth bombs like every minute. And you're just like, I never looked at it that way. It's a complete paradigm shift wow. of how you look at things and, and how you do your business. And I, I don't know how anybody couldn't benefit from reading that book or listening to that podcast. It's, it's life changing. Yeah. Really. People are asking for the link. If you can drop that in sure. or at least the name. Yeah. Um, I'll drop it in. Right. And, yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. Um, Total big believer. I, I'm a, a huge, huge love of Barbara Stanley and her books. Um, um, she wrote like Sacred Success. This is one here, Overcoming Under Earning, which I use as a text for one of my other classes. Um, one of the best ones I wrote, uh, ever read, um, I read this summer was um, Stories of Six Figure Women. That was that was impressive impressive i would recommend that book over these other two um because it was all about um that aha moment of when people shifted and realized oh my gosh i've been working so hard and all i had to do was you know x you know and 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 also listening to a lot of their self worth cuz as women um cuz i think there's all women on this call a lot of times we were brought up in a different time, right? And I always um, explain to my kids, it was so different when I grew up, what I was allowed to do, what I saw. I was like, it was a much different world. So I have to work through a lot of imposter syndrome, a lot of self-worth issues. Like I, and I still hit ceiling sometimes. I always say, I don't know if it's a sticky floor or a glass ceiling, but when I'm feeling it, I have to work through it. Um, but one of the things that I just took on was if I feel uncomfortable, I have to decide, is it fear or is it like right for me? I forget the exact words. Like, is it right for me? Am I, why am I uncomfortable? Because if it's fear, then I have to do it anyway. Like kind of push through that because that's where your genius comes out right? Pushing through what makes you feel uncomfortable, but do it in baby steps, slivers of success, small, small, small things. Um, another thing I want to talk about with attracting is who you bring in as a client also has to be soul centered, right? A lot of people take clients that aren't a good match to them because they don't have any money. And they're like, I just need money. I just need money. I work with everybody. And there is nothing worse than saying you work with everybody. Because if you work with everybody, you work with nobody. Right. Not everyone is in alignment. I'm a big, big believer of going for your niche, mm -hmm. right? And really figuring it out. I know I logically brained people are very attracted to me. Logically brained 
um, spiritually grounded introverts. That's not to say that I don't get an extrovert every one in a while, but they're probably logically brained and spiritually grounded, right? I, that's, those are the people I tend to work with. And the word they use is freedom. Freedom is a non-negotiable for them, right? They're usually highly successful in an industry where they don't think about entrepreneurship and how they can switch that out. Um, and they're making all the money. They usually have all the things, but their heart's not singing. They are not happy. They're like, this doesn't make my heart sing. I got to do something else. Those are my people. But you have to know what are your people saying and how do you solve that problem, right? You have to know what are the words your people are using so you can hear what those words are. I was talking to someone the other day and um, I, I want to say we were in a one-on-one unless we were switched off in like um, networking or something. He was saying all the solo lined words. He was saying, actually this happened twice last week. They were saying all the solo lined words. They were using our lingo. But one, I knew exactly, like when I was on the call, I was like, something's not feeling right. He's using all the right words, but something's not right. And sure enough, something came up, but I was like, you're a hell no. Even if you want to work with me, I will not work with you. Something came up in that conversation. And I'm like, nope, you're not my people. Uh, and it happened with another, I work with a lot of doctors that are going into alternative medicine or have the mind body that are trying to leave hospitals, practices, stuff like that. And I was talking to this one doctor who heard about me saying all the right words, but something wasn't clicking. And I was like, something's not right here. And sure enough, something came up in the conversation that was a hell no for me. And I'm like, you're not, you're not my people. It was just a hell no of something that they believed in that I did not, but it was like a hell no across the board. <laughs> I was like, nope, <laughs> you're not my people. I can't really, I can't really help you, but let me find someone who might be able to help you. I'm just not your person, but I know people that could help you. Right. So always know other people for different segments because I have adopted the policy of, I only work with hell. Yes. Only work with hell. Yes. Yes. When you've come to find me because you are ready to really uh, build your business, become more wealthy, live in financial abundance, when you are ready, you find me, right? Um, what is that? Um, Paul Taubman, a, a, a member of ours, told me this. What did he say? Uh, when the student's ready, the teacher appears. That's what it is, Right. So I, like I've, I've, I've been um, teaching with NLBP for nine years, right? And there are people that have been with me for nine years, right? And I have watched some people really skyrocket their businesses. I've watched people go up and down. I've watched people change all the time. Um, I've watched, I've watched a lot of people over those nine years. But what I do know for sure is when people are ready they will find me. They'll start showing up again, right? I have masterminds. When people show up, it means they're ready to grow or something's not working and they're ready to look at it. When people are in my masterminds all the time and then don't show up for a couple, I know that something went wrong. I usually reach out to them in my private group because um, I know something went wrong. They're not hitting their goals. They're... um they're hitting imposter syndrome, self-worth, like something happened that shifted them out. Um, you know, and it's, and it's my goal to be there. Right. So we all go through it, by the way, we all go through it at every single level. So no matter where you are, it's usually right before you hit a hundred thousand, you're on a roll. And then you just can't break a hundred thousand. I see it about two fifty to 300. If you're building a company and we see it about between seven and 900,000, if you're trying to hit a million, it's all exactly the same thing happening. It's just right before, because it's a mental goal for you. That's, that's a goal that you've set and you just can't get there because you're blocking yourself. Somehow you don't feel worthy. You don't feel strong. Imposter syndrome. I still get it too. 
um, all of those things. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, any questions? Questions or something that people are struggling with in any way that you want to bring up? Nothing? I just looked at the time. It's like flying by. Um, All right. All so, right. Camille, you know, so, so do I, re do I hear you um, correctly that it's the, you know, how do you know it's your soul, right? Like, you know, we're, we're, we have this idea and, and we, we may confuse, it may feel like the soul, the ego, I don't know who's operating this. I don't know. Um, but it's about the feeling the, the it. it's trusting that hell yes, hell no for me, you know, and, and even in the, is it fear or is it, you know, is, is, is it fear, fear or love, or, fear or love? Fear, right. Is fear it fear or love? Or love? And is it the excitement of love or is it the uh, I'm in danger fear and, and the clarity, getting the clarity around that. I, so what I'm hearing is learn to have the self love to then trust the feeling, the, um, you'll know, like the, 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 you'll know feeling of, you know, cause we do when it's, that those glorious moments of no doubt, those glorious clarity moments of yes or no, um, trust those. And then the more you trust it, you're exercising that. Yes. Um, but if you're thinking, um, because I, me I immediately like went to like an abusive relationship or something where people say, I should stay. I, and it, 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 this happens right. in work, this happens in work too, but that's immediately when I went. So okay, you know what you should do. You don't always allow it, right? Everything is fear or love, right? It's one big right. gradient. You're, uh, you're just somewhere along the line of fear and love. And I think that's soul and ego, by the way, right? That's, mm -hmm. that's soul and ego. But if you're saying, I really should do this, right? I really should go to Thanksgiving dinner but you don't want to, you have the decide, <laughs> you know, and a, a great exercise is ask yourself why eight times and then say, you know, uh, and keep asking yourself why, and you will see the answer at the end of that. Like, why do you, why do I feel this? Well, why do I feel this? But why do I feel that? And what is it about that, that, and you just keep asking the why, because it could be fear. Why do I feel fear? Well, that's something new for me. Why are you afraid of something new? Like, why am I afraid of something new? Well, makes me a little uncomfortable. What makes you uncomfortable about it? Like, and just keep going um, until you're listening to yourself. It's like holding space for yourself of is it in alignment? Is it not in alignment? And that's why I'm a very big one of, I do not make decisions. Someone was trying to sell me yesterday and I was like, I'm going on vacation and this isn't a decision day for me. And, oh, we'll give you a discount. You got to decide. I said, no, I don't. You're telling me you're not going to give it to me next month. If I come give you 10 grand, like, <laughs> it was like, I don't play in that game. Right. So everything shows up perfectly. The universe perfectly aligns itself for you. There is nothing you ever are going to lose because the universe will always bring it back, including all the lessons you need to learn. If you haven't learned it, the universe is bringing that back too, mm -hmm. right? So there is, you cannot not match with something that is meant for you. It can't happen. That's not the way the universal laws work, right? So you don't have that fear of missing out. It's kind of ridiculous right? You are never going to miss out, right? But there's also a time to step up, to change, to tweak, but do it slowly, right? Don't go through and say, I'm dropping 10 programs this month. Do it slowly, drop one, <laughs> right? Do things slowly. I do not make decisions fast. I do things slowly because if it doesn't work, I can go back the other way. Right. And a lot of times people don't notice when I do things. 
because I do them slowly. And I decide, does it feel good? Does it feel not good? Is this a good client for me? That's why I don't take long-term clients either, right? It's usually a gradual way they come in. They come through one of my programs or they come through a membership or I do like a two, three pack strategy sessions usually before someone would ever buy a 12 week and that's as big as I get. And that's very intensive accelerator program. There is no one that I would allow to buy that. If I didn't know who they were first, I just wouldn't allow it because maybe I don't want to be with you for 12 weeks. Maybe we are not allowed. (laughs) Like, no, you start at this package. Let's, let's have one or two sessions and see what we come up with. We'll brainstorm. We'll, we'll make it better. And if so, we can, you know, add this other thing to it, right? But it has to feel good for me. It's not about the money. And you will find when you let people go that no longer serve you, clients, better ones come in. Mm -hmm. They are holding space for your ideal client. And you don't want that to happen. Does that make sense? Someone else had a question or a statement before. I can't see y'all. I, th- I thought I heard two people talking at once when Heidi was talking. Oh, I had said something, but that's okay. It, it was It's perfect the way the conversation went. Okay. <laughs> oh, actually, on a different note, what I was going to ask you, Camille, was when you're working with a team, whether they're a client or like I have a network marketing style business, so I have people right. I'm teaching, right? That I'm, yep. there, I'm, I'm mentoring them to duplicate what I do which we're all often doing something similar to that. So how do you, the ones that kind of ghost you and drop off the radar, you know, like you say, it's like a misalignment. It's like, you know, I can't remember the word that you used. It's uh, um, they're you know, hitting imposter syndrome. So. Well, what not you, always. Yes. They could just not be aligned with what you're doing. Right. Yeah. Could not be aligned for them. It's, it's not. Um, they just weren't the right person, you know what I'm saying? Or it's not right. Right. When I have members come in and out, some, sometimes it doesn't work out and that's okay. That's not my fault. It just, we weren't right. right. And that's okay. That, that, so you have to hold space and you have to realize that not everyone sees everything the way you see it. In fact, no two Mm -hmm. people see things the same way right? You, they can only approach things from their own perspective. And if it doesn't feel good, that's okay. But there might be a different way for them to do it. Well, and it's everybody's in a different season of their life too, right? So you, you never know when you start until you ask those questions. And I think the why that's brilliant, you know, ask the why eight times, right? You got to peel the yeah. layer, peel the layer until you get to the actual root cause. Yeah. So I want to read something really quick before we end. Um, it's the conflict, the, the conflicting agendas between the ego and the soul. And the voice of fear is the ego and the voice of love is the soul. And I'm reading this from Sacred Success. It's a little chart she has. Um, the source of false power is the ego. The source of true power is your soul. Ego's job is to keep you safe. The soul's job is to make sure that you soar. The ego learned its job in childhood. Mm -hmm. The soul gets its marching orders from God or your higher power, whatever your God is. The ego focuses on your flaws. I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy. The soul reminds you of all of your gifts. I am an influencer. I attract the right people. The ego tells you lies. The soul only speaks your truth. Mm -hmm. The ego urges you to hide. Your soul pushes you to shine. Mm. Your ego's defensive and impatient, right? Acting quickly. Your ego is peaceful and accepting. Your ego makes excuses. Your soul takes action. Ego compares self to others where the soul has a comparison only for itself and others. The ego sees only the past. It's always working in your past. The soul sees everything as a gift. And I'll say, I'll add a lesson. The ego craves the comfort of familiarity. 
the soul favors the uncertainty and the unknown, right? It's going into the unknown fearlessly. Ego aspires for mediocrity. Icracy. Do I say that right? The soul aspires to greatness. The ego speaks first and it speaks loud. The soul is quiet, but very persistent. The ego depends on busyness and addictions where the soul requires stillness. That's the end. But I think a um, lot to say about the difference between your ego and your soul. Was this helpful for people? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. It's also being recorded. So if you want to hear it again, we will have the recording for you. I think we're going to just start putting these on my YouTube channel. Um, I want to remind you guys next, usually I don't do masterclasses in December, but I decided I want to. And that's just it. So I am doing one in December on the 28th, which is Christmas week, because I know it's so quiet. And at the end of the week, it's just a good time to kind of sit and talk. And um, I forget what I said it was going to be on, though. Um, let me look really quickly and I'll give you. I think I already picked. Um, so mark your calendars. It is always, if you have trouble registering, it's always going to be this Zoom link. My, okay. They're always this Zoom link. So you can actually bookmark it or just go find an old one. Um, free masterclass. Oh, setting up your business for 2024. Okay. So it'll probably be like our goals and strategies. And if anyone wants to be in a hot seat, I can do live strategy sessions. So we can talk them out and make sure it's aligned with who you are. <laughs> mm -hmm. So that'll be, that'll be December. We'll just have another one of these. And um, the fourth Thursday of every single month going forward in 2024, I will also be doing soul aligned business um, masterclasses like this. I don't know what's happening to my camera right now. Um, so um that's about it. And I do in January, I have some financial abundance free classes coming up that are all stacking for my 12 week six figure soul boot camp, which is a group 12 week program. It's a group program, but you do get one on ones with me um, to help you um, really put together a great strategy and feel that financial abundance and make sure everything is always in alignment. So that is coming out. Um, we start again in January 30th is when we start that. And um, if you are interested, I forget, there's an early bird, but I think it goes to mid-January and you'll also get a 30-minute psyche session with me to help clear out some limiting beliefs before you show up. All right, that's all I got. I am headed to Italy. <laughs> <laughs> Have a great Thank time. you guys wow. for showing up and being a part of this. And I will see you next month at our next one. Please reach out if I can ever be of service or answer any questions for you at all. Have yeah, a great thanks, Camille. Thank all you. Right. Love you all. Enjoy. Bye. Bye. Bye.